For hip hop started out as with a lot of social commentary, and yet what you know, yet there was still the gangster stuff and all that. But that's just, that's what seemed to make the more money. And there's been kind of a rumor around, or it's been thought of that it's better to downplay the social aspects of it, the social commentary, and go with that thing. And do you have any any opinions on that? You know what? I think that the reason that people convey those messages early on is because they were just trying to express what was going on in their community and whatever the frustrations were about there not being, you know, whether it was programming or government funding or just, you know, just expressing what they saw that was wrong with the world. I mean, you know, look at what's happening with government right now in America. It's sad. And I think that's what a lot of you know, stuff was that we were trying to convey, even graffiti artists. We were always fighting against the big system. And so it wasn't so much that we were doing it because we thought that was the commercially viable avenue to go down. It was just that this is the stuff that we're experiencing and like everybody else, we have a voice and we want to be heard. And I think that unfortunately, when people are angry, in some cases they're at their best when they're conveying those sort of messages. And I think that that's what people identify with. That's what they tap into. So that ends up being the thing that's popular. But then, you know, people turn it into this thing that says, okay, if you, you, know, you keep it really raw and, and angry and scream, that stuff is going to sell. And I, I think it kind of gets blown out of proportion. I, I really don't think that it's intentional. I just think that people are trying to convey a message. Days. Futura, Lee Quinones, Lady Pink. I mean, I could go on and on, but these, these are all the folks that I came up with, and I'm so excited when I look at this photograph, because I'm like 19 years old, and I'm you know, a professional artist at that point, and it was just so exciting. Can you tell me a bit about uh, the, uh, the, the drawing board? Um. Oh, well, the drawing board was a graphic design firm that myself and my partner, Steve Carr, formed. And really what it was, was we were the in-house design firm for Def Jam Recordings. But in addition to that, we also worked with uh, Bad Boy, Notorious B.I.G., Sean Combs, Mary J. Blige, folks like that. And you know, really our idea was that we wanted to basically have a boutique design firm inside the office and really give us the freedom to do a bunch of different projects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to talk a little bit about the history of hip hop as it relates to my career working in New York City. And like Rob mentioned, it starts out in the really like the, the mid to late 70s, which you know, for some people, you know, it's a, you know, like an eternity. And, you know, it seemed like a long time ago to me as well, because I was a teenager back then. And really, I was just trying to find a way to express myself and kind of stay out of trouble and get my parents off my back all at the same time. And Bill Adler, what's your, uh, what's the relationship you have with Bill, Bill Adler? Bill Adler was the publicist for Def Jam back in the day. And We've just known each other forever, so you know we've been friends for almost 30 years, and so we've collaborated on a bunch of different projects. But for your purposes, he co-wrote a book with me called Definition, The Art and Design of Hip Hop, and he uh, wrote the, the book Def Jam 25, the last great record label. And so we've been friends and collaborators for you know many, many years. He was a traditional journalist right from the start, and so I think his outlook on it was a little bit different than mine, whereas for me, I was of the culture and was somebody that was making work as a way of trying to express my frustration with you know, what it was like to be a young person, whereas I think with him, he was just there to help us uh, you know, create this sort of vehicle to express what we were trying to, you know, get out in terms of frustration. Because whenever he talked about having, you know, to teach artists how to do a professional interview and educating them about, you know, which publications were the best to get their message out and things like that, I think that, you know, it was really, you know, it was great that he was there because he was a little bit older and he had perspective that we didn't have, you know, as young people. Mm -hmm. 
And, and those books, uh, Def Jam 25 and uh, Definition, uh, The Art and Design of Hip Hop, when were, when were those released? Um, well, now you're really putting me on the spot. Okay. Um, Def Jam, uh, Definition came out in 2006, I think, and uh, Def Jam 25 came out maybe two years ago. And what was the impetus uh, behind Definition? Like, what, what, what really got it, you know, we've well, got to do this book? The idea uh, for doing Definition, the art and design of hip hop, came about because I was tired of constantly talking about how much attention rappers were getting and how much air they suck up in the room. And again, and I'm not hating on those guys, I'm just saying when you think about hip hop being a four-legged table, the, the, the music wing gets a lot of attention, whereas the graffiti wing or the breakdancing wing or the DJing wing like, gets a lot less attention. And so I was like thinking to myself, I want to showcase uh, you know, all these talented, you know, visual individuals that just do amazing work. Whether they're graffiti writers or graphic designers or fashion photographers or, or illustrators, whatever it is. So that was really the reason for creating the book, is that, you know, these people help pave the way as well. And when we went knocking on doors, we were surprised that a lot of people agreed and we got an opportunity to make a really beautiful book to celebrate the visual aspects of hip hop. And I, and I would even say that, you know, I don't think a lot of the general public is aware of how much that design is around them on their products and whatever. They just, you know, they're not really aware of that. Yeah. Well, that, that's the other thing is that because hip hop is you know, 40 years old to be nice. The, the graffiti was the first leg of that and graffiti's been around a long time. And so you have to imagine if, you know, you know the, the senior people that started out in the early 70s doing graffiti, those people are established artists now. And so they've, you know, gotten an opportunity to create all kinds of products. They're not, 15 year old kids. And that's the, the misconception that people have about graffiti artists is that we are, you know, you know, grown up, intelligent, well thinking people that, you know, are really amazing talents. And when you look at some of the work that some of the people have done, like Ernie Vales that, you know, started out coming here to Winnipeg early on and paved the way for everybody else to come. He's an amazing individual, and he's on par with, you know, the best contemporary artists from, you, you know, 10, 20 years ago. I mean, he's an amazing guy. And I think that that sort of thing is lost on people. And so the idea for the book was really to showcase all the amazing talent that's come around in the last 30 years.